I've heard a few complaints about antidepressants from psychiatrists and from patients. They tend to be things like this, that antidepressants don't address the underlying pathophysiology of the disease, that they have too many side effects, particularly sexual side effects, or that antidepressants just aren't powerful enough with only small differences from placebo. So what if we had a treatment that addresses the underlying cause, has few side effects, and a big effect size? You'd think we'd all be using it, but we're not. That's Lightbox in Seasonal Affective Disorder. The status of light therapy did start to shift about 20 years ago when the American Journal of Psychiatry concluded that it has a large effect size in both winter and non-winter depression, around 0.8 to 0.9, which is much larger than the 0.3 to 0.4 range we see for SSRIs in their effect size. That paper was written by psychiatrists with no skin in the game, They were not light therapy researchers, and many of them, like Charlie Nemiroff, were heavily funded by the pharmaceutical industry. As far as side effects, outside of headaches and eye strain, light therapy is pretty well tolerated, and even improves sexual dysfunction, possibly by raising testosterone levels in men, which tend to go down in the winter. So after 40 years of research and dozens of trials, I wasn't expecting to find much that is new when another controlled trial of light therapy rolled out from China this year. But this study didn't focus on depression outcomes. Instead, they looked at cognition and what was going on in the brain during light therapy. They randomized 88 patients with mild depression to either light box or, as a sham placebo, a dim light box that wasn't powerful enough to treat anything. At the end of the trial, Those who used the real light box for 30 minutes in the morning for these two months were less depressed, as expected, and they also had better attention and vigilance. On fMRI, those two cognitive benefits correlated with improved connection between the right cerebellar lobule 9 and the left temporal region. That sounds promising, and it's in line with earlier studies of light therapy in dementia and traumatic brain injury, where it also improved cognition. But I've got to dampen the enthusiasm here. Whenever you see a study of cognition, check whether they corrected the results for tests of multiple measures. Cognitive tests usually have dozens of measures, which means that we're likely to see some random bits of improvement or worsening here and there just by chance alone. And these results did not pass that higher level test of multiple measures. But something else did stand out to me in this study. They found that the light therapy reduced activity in the default mode network. That default mode is the center of ruminative thinking, rumination, the vicious cycle of brooding and negative self-talk that we see in depression. And for many patients with depression, Ruminative thinking is their main complaint, but we don't know much about what improves it. So TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, has some positive data, and this is encouraging on the biological front with light therapy, but I'd also like to see data with light therapy to see if this biological finding actually makes a clinical difference in ruminative thinking. Meanwhile, if you're interested in rumination, there is a new type of CBT, rumination-focused CBT, that addresses this symptoms, and you can learn how to use it in our interview with the founder of this therapy, Edward Watkins, way back in the July 2018 issue of the Carlisle Psychiatry Report. For light therapy, I have a step-by-step guide on how to use it on my website, chrisakenmd.com forward slash light therapy. And if you've followed those recommendations before, I have made some recent changes to the product recommendations for purchasing a light box. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel and head on over to thecarlatreport.com and consider subscribing to our newsletter, which brings you unbiased news about all things psychiatric with useful clinical updates, expert interviews, and bottom line assessments of the latest research studies. Thanks for watching.